It's a breakfast and plus TV Africa time for us to go through the front pages of national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Open up on Qataria joins us via phone this morning. It's good to have you join us, Open up on Qataria. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, then. Thank you so much. Uh, we start off with the Punch newspaper this morning. Looking at the Punch, the caption says, Gunmen disguised as worshippers massacre over 35 in Ondo Church. And that's the bold caption. OAU alumni ex chair, wife among the dead. Very sad. Um, it was like a war front. This is what uh, survivors quoted to say. Attack has arrived when we we're ending service and shoot from different angles. This is what the priest is saying. It's Black Sunday, Akari Dolu. Afeni Ferrer, Buhari, Oshibajo, Governors, Tunumbu, or this morning. There's a writer underneath that bold caption on the punch this morning. As you're looking at the front page of the punch, primary, Buhari meets governors and party chairman, stakeholders, and please tighten security. Galadima slams Adamu as APC chairman insists on pushing Tunubu. Uh, that's what you find. Party inaugurates subcommittee chairman and delegates arrive Abuja. The riders, the riders you have underneath uh, this or the caption, you know, it's on the, the top page of the punch this morning. 20 power plants suffer major problems, blackout worsen. What's going on with Nigeria? And uh, just before we move away from the punch, three die as Lagos Ministry and police hoodlums demolish 200 buildings. Three die as Lagos Ministry and police hoodlums demolish 200 buildings. That's also another caption on the punch this morning. National carrier gets licensed today and local Airfares or airlines, I beg your pardon, for the process. National carrier gets licensed today. Local airlines for the process. <laughs> it can only get better with us in Nigeria. You also find a picture of, uh, you know, a representation of what happened yesterday. The governor of Ondo State, Akere Dolu, I mean, looking like he's shedding a few tears. You could see. Uh, some persons in the hospital and also the governor visiting. These are the headlines on the punch. We'll move away from the punch this morning. We'll quickly take a look at the Nation newspaper. And on the Nation, consensus candidate are best option. Buhari insists. We're talking about the president here. APC will win in the third straight time. That's a lot of confidence right there, which is okay. Inside, you also have a Keridolu to Lawan and Bello step down. Umayi denies stepping down. I am still in the race, says Yahaya Bello. Tight security around Eagle Square. And let's also forget that, you know, there's also a narrative saying that you have the Nadin candidates stepping down, you know, for a Southern candidate because the presidency has said, hey, you need to come up with all of this. But away from that, you also have more interesting headlines on The Nation this morning. All Progressive Congress, a moment of decision. That's another one. Some analysis. I'm sure you want to find out what that means. How gunmen invade church and kill many in a war. Fashola hands over houses to Kanu beneficiaries. Interesting on the nation. And bad loans. Mortgage banks. MFBS get a 15 day deadline. Petrol fried rates is on the increase. I mean, that's also what you find uh, on uh, the nation this morning. Just a little bit, not so much. On a Monday morning, uh, we move away from the nation. We take a look at the, the leadership uh, newspaper this morning. And on the leadership, daredevil terrorist attack on Doe Church and kills 58 worshippers. It's a caption you would find under leadership. 24 hours to APC convention, South yet to agree on consensus candidate. Can two walk together until they agree?
Mm. That's just, is something you need to think about. President Muhammad Buhari meets APC Kakus, uh, governors ahead of primary tomorrow. Southern leaders commend president. Northern governors for zoning a presidential ticket to region. I mean, I think there's a lot that might be going on with the APC, e even though, uh, you know, that might not be what the APC would want to say, but a lot is going on. But yes, we know that there's a lot of activities to be going on between the 6th through the 8th of June. Fingers are crossed. Northern governor's position not binding on me. Yahaya Bello is quoted on that. He's very brave. And you also find stakeholders worried over epileptic power supply. Interesting. ADC presidential ticket. Kachuku Mogalu. Uh, I don't know. APC presidential. ADC, I beg your pardon. ADC presidential ticket. Kachuku Mogalu. Orders take battle to Abiokuta. The headlines you find this morning and PDP to BOT article meets today over running mates and orders. FCT minister condemns the lynching of alleged blasphemer. Operators outrage over 20 year e customs concession to China firm. This is what you find this morning, and stakeholders worried over epileptic power supply. Uh, these are the headlines this morning on the leadership newspaper. We'll move away from that and we quickly look at it. It's just the last uh, point of call for us. Outreach trails on Doe Catholic Church bloodbath. It's really one. It's very sad because it can happen to anyone. A Fanny Ferry says world should hold federal government responsible. Mm. Criminals operating with impunity can lament. Mm -hmm. And Governor Akira Dolu vows to hunt down a cylinder. Nigeria fast becoming a failed state. Really? We're we not a failed state already. Come on. Inflation, volatile FX to side post econo economy ahead of 2023 polls. It's a bold caption you find this morning. Outreach trolls on the Catholic Church bloodbath. We took that already. A fanny fairy says, well, should hold the federal government responsible. Criminals operating with impunity can lament. Governor Kerry Dulu vows to hunt down. Okay, we take this already. How APC presidential candidates will emerge. Nadin elders slam regional 11 governors over zoning of APC presidential ticket. 2033 presidency, Southern Middle Belt leaders condemn Buhari APC governors. No peace loving Nigeria will want a Nadin successor. Buhari. Okay, I don't know which of the Buhari we're talking about. But that's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Independent newspaper. Open up on Qatar, so stand by. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. I'm not sure if it's beautiful, but it, it, it's very sad. Good morning, Nessie. Open up. What, what do you make of, of, you know, this headline? It's dominating, will be dominating the front pages of National Dailies. Gunmen disguised as worshippers. That's what the punch is quoted to say. Massacre over 35 in Ondo State. Well, the, the massacre, as, you, uh, as usual, has been contemporized uh, in the media. And after a while, it will just fizzle out. That's what happens in this country when criminals make barbecue of Nigeria. Uh, the security situation or insecurity in the country has this apocalyptic dimension to the concatenation of death and murder by these criminals that are treated with kid gloves. And so they wreak havoc with impunity just because we have this cataclysmic leadership by President Muhammad Buhari, who is not bothered, no change of conscience, probably because 
is none of his family members is a victim. And so at the end of it all, the massacre, they go on air and speak gibberish. Complete nonsense. The government has failed. We are headed slowly, but steadily, and even so shortly, for a rendezvous with anarchy in this country. This is not the first. That's why I said for now, it will make the headline, and after that, it will fizzle out and it's business as usual. Because we have a government that voted to protect lives and property. And as a government that has repudiated that obligation. It is sad. And that is why even Nigerians are clamoring for uh, self defense and urging the government to allow Nigerians use their guns to protect themselves. But the federal government is not ready, and I've said just yes to that. I know that uh, Honorable Ade Adeogu, who is, uh, I think, chairman of the committee in the House of Reps, on firearms or whatever, and uh, proposed a deal to that effect. But nothing has been heard. Mercy, it is quite sad, unnerving, disheartening, that you live in a country where all the federal government is interested in is looting the tribe. Every day you hear an accountant general of the federation has stolen so much money and admitted to bail. A former SGF stolen so much money and admitted to bail. A CCT chairman displayed that, uh, that with that uh, 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 disgrace he displayed. And it's allowed freely. You have a Magu that is being indicted, is being promoted to AIG and retired. And when you have people committing all kinds of crimes with impunity, what do you expect? Tomorrow they come to tell you these are not Nigerians. What is my business if they are Nigerians or not? It is your duty to protect us. If they are not Nigerians, how do they get it? If the brothers are poor, what do you do? You see, so you have a government that is reckless, completely reckless and insensitive to our plight. And these things will continue. And that's why I say we are ahead of so because when a man is pushed to the world, he bounces back with a double effort. I will not sit back and allow you to slaughter me like a cow. I won't do that. I'll defend myself. You see a man with a gun. You start a responsible man, you start asking questions, how did you get the gun, how did you do this? This is security of practice. Who asked this responsible man, how did you carry this gun, how did you write the license? You prosecute it, you convict it, you jail it. This is security of practice cannot go out there to arrest these criminals committing this massacre. And you call, you say you live in the country. It's a failed state, completely failed state. Okunabon Kataria, uh, let's also look at another caption. Consensus candidate are best option, Buhari is insisting. I mean, it feels like the presidency. Uh, a lot's been going on. Of course, we're expecting that the APC primaries should, you know, should commence at this point in time, even though INEC had stipulated that you know, the 3rd of June, apparently 4th of June, should be concerned, but there might just be some extension. Now you have the APC saying that uh, consensus candidate is a best option because the president is insisting and that's it. And so to some quotas you have, uh, the southern governors were saying, oh yes, we're saying. I mean, uh, everyone's stepping down to say, let the southern governors continue. But Yahya Bello has not, uh, it's not even in part of the school of thought of all of that. But really, let's get to the crux of it. What do you make of this one? Consensus candidate are best option. Buhari insists. I want you to juxtapose that with the fact that the uh, you know the APC well, when is you considering. Have a candidate, it is uh, provided for in our electoral act, okay. and the whole essence is to impose a candidate on the party. It's only a subterfuge <laughs> to impose a candidate on the party. Uh, 
as if but then we are in the best of shots because he knows too well that his uh, preferred candidates might not emerge at the convention. And so what he's trying to do is voice his preferred candidate to the back door. Well, will I call it the back door? Because it is provided for in the electoral act. So I will, I will no longer call it the back door. But that's the way of forcing his preferred candidate, because he has already said that his preferred candidate is close to his heart. Which means he has a preferred candidate. And rightly too, we are all human beings. Rightly, we, are, I mean, we all have choices based on certain considerations. So what he wants is to ensure that other contestants agree with him on his preferred candidate. That's why he said it's the best option. But we all know that, that in an ideal democratic setting, you allow all to go to the polls to test their popularity and legitimacy. Well, I mean legitimacy. You know, most times people mix up legitimacy and legality. Legitimacy is acceptability. Legality has to do with law. You know? So that you, normally you allow them to go to the polls and test their popularity and legitimacy. But he probably is scared that if that is allowed to happen, his preferred candidate might not win. And I believe that is what has been causing the procrastination. Uh, I'm talking of the, uh, the conduct of their convention so that they could resolve this issue, smoothing out the rats, and then on the day of convention, you have just a consensus candidate. But it is obvious that the likes of Tidibu, who has said he's not going to acquiesce, will contest. And I see one or two other persons also say no. So, even when you talk about consensus, don't forget the APC had it in their form that you have to sign that when once the party agrees on the candidate, others will withdraw. Hmm. They are working in sync with Buhari's, uh, President Buhari's uh, thinking. Okay. So I, I, I don't think it's the, it's the best, but well, is the, is the leader of the party. So if others agree, it's a party decision, and the party decision is supreme. Okay, so, but, but, but do you think, Okuna uh, Bank yeah. yeah. let's get to it now. Do you think that this might just be, you know, some form of consensus and agreement right here because you have the northern elders slamming the regions. I mean, you're talking about 11 over governors zoning of APC presidential ticket. You're not talking of, uh, you're actually talking of uh, the, the aspirants. And they're not talking of non-aspirants. You are saying consensus. So you're talking of the aspirants. That, that is what the uh, electoral act provided for. Not you, Messi. Not me. Not uh, not non aspirant So if the aspirants agree, uh, yeah, that's it. it has, yeah, the northern government will will slate it. Why will they slate it? Because they are not happy. Most of them want it to they not to retain it. It's like the hegemony. So those that are vast to power shift into the south will excoriate it. No doubt about that. Uh, even if you talk of the South, you also have the Southeast. Don't forget. So the truth is, when you say consensus, it is within the purview of those that are staring in the party. They are not considering your opinion. They are not considering my opinion. It is just the opinion of the aspirants. That's all. Mm. All right. Um, let's also see, I mean, looking at the front page of our National Daily this morning, you have inflation, volatile effects to sign post economy ahead of 2023 polls. I'm not sure, <laughs> like you always say, you are not an economist, but let's share your thoughts on this one. I, why do you have to tell the world that I'm not an economist? <laughs> you come again tomorrow now, you, tomorrow now you say I'm not a mathematician. No, no. Well, <laughs> that's on a lighter note. <laughs> that's okay. No problem. Uh, definitely, uh, when you talk about um, inflation, volatile forex, 
you know, this is this is the electoral crunch time. And so you have, just like the PDP convention, there is this rumor that dollars you are flying left, right, and center. $50,000, $30,000. And of course, that could stimulate inflation in the economy. And politicians, this is when you have so much money in circulation that could definitely lead to inflation. So, we rightly said, I'm not an economist, but with my little knowledge of economics in secondary school, we all know what could lead to inflation and when is the, uh, when you have the political hostings, you have so much money in circulation that automatically will trigger inflation in the economy. Mm. Let's go to the leadership now. I mean, you have uh, very uh, interesting headlines this morning. It talks about 24 hours to the APC convention and the fact that you have the South yet to agree on a consensus candidate. Not, let's not forget that when we talk about the South, you have the South, you have the Southeast, and you have the Southwest. So, so, what is your question? My question now is, what do you think about this? You know, um, the whole idea of the South North agreeing on a consensus candidate. The South will not agree on consensus candidate unless it is it is. That candidate is imposed on the party. Because you know the South, like you rightly said, you have South West, South East, and South South. Now, the South West, you're talking of the uh, Yoruba and Co. South East, you're talking of the Eagles. South South, you're talking of Rivers, Bayelsa, Delta, Aquila, Cross River. And they all believe that they have a right. Let's take the South East, for example. The Igbos believe that they have been so marginalized that the best way to protect them is to give them the presidency. If they have to have the sense of belonging. In all fairness, too, I agree. <laughs> then you come to the South South. We just had a Jonathan, but they will tell you that on the platform of PDP. But you're not coming on board to rule PDP or APC, you're coming on board to rule Nigeria. But what if the president's candidate is from the South South? You have the Southwest. They also believe that you have the Anaba Senior. You have the vice sitting vice president. But even at that, they will tell you, oh no. So if you say the if you go to the South and we want to be just and fair, it's actually the Southeast. But that won't be the case. When you take on the advisement, what is going on right now, and the allegations against the South, especially the ESN and IFOB, I don't think anybody will want to give to the Southeast for now. Although they will also argue that if you give to them, there will be a cessation of hostilities. That might also be the argument. But for now, I don't think the APC will give to the Southeast. So it's between the south, 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 and the southwest. Now, who has the cloud? Who has the nexus? Who is close to Mr. President's heart? Who is going to be Mr. President's political bride? That will determine, and that's why they are talking of a consensus candidate. Mm. Okay, uh, very interesting. But fingers are actually crossed, and we we'll see how all of this, uh, you know, pans out. A matter of hours, from... my dear sister. It's just a matter of hours. Yes. Uh, uh, t today is uh, the 6th, if I'm not mistaken. And, of course, we have the APC uh, presidential primaries would run through the 6th through the 8th. So, I mean, it's like one, two, three days to go. But let's come back to not in governor's position and not binding on me, according to Yahya Bella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it because right now it feels like you have an agreement. I mean, everyone's come to an agreement like, you know what, in the APC, the presidency has said, and it feels like a lot of persons were waiting for the presidency, you know, to make the comments in the APC, especially with the aspirant. And uh, we have, you know, different reports saying that some candidates, especially from the North, have actually backed down because you have, um, you know, this reporters going out and all of the signature. But you have Yahya Bello saying, hey, this one does not consent. Yahya Bello. <laughs> I, I, 
don't know. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, I don't, I don't know where Yaya Bello is getting, getting his guts from, honestly. And I don't know what is giving him that confidence. He said he's not binding on him. He's going to stand alone. It's just a question of ego, egocentrism, you know. Everybody who is in this place is not there in the image of the electric or Nigerian. And they are just there to, for their own, for themselves. And that is why he's saying he's not binding. On him, and that's also going to be. But you see, the truth is, I listened to him yesterday on the sister station, and he was full of a provocation. In one breath, he said, anybody the president brings forward is going to accept. In another breath, he's saying, oh, because the issue of the not, the decision by the, uh, the not is planned on Mr. President's preference for a southern candidate. Now, he is plenty ignorant of that preference. Meanwhile, he also said he attended a meeting where the issue was also mooted. So it's a matter of double speak. And he's saying the decision of the Northern governors or the North, not binding on him. So I don't really know where he's going to get his guts from. But when you have the present, you have the preferred candidate, when the preferred candidate emerges, I can tell you willy nilly. He, 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 will, he, he will lose, even if he goes ahead to the polls, because they will team against, they will team up against him. He's definitely not going to get it. Yaya Bello, I can tell you authoritatively, is already out of the race. Not because he's not popular, not because he doesn't have the quality or he doesn't have what it takes, but because there is already the decision to zone to the south. And every other person that is advanced to this decision will be on its own. Out of how many experience, if two or three say they disagree, they will lose. Others will back the candidate of Mr. President. So they will have to go to another political party to realize that ambition. So whether he agrees, whether it is binding on him or not, is completely immaterial. Let him pray that a lot of people will agree, including the president, will agree that it should be thrown open. But once they know that Mr. President prefers a Southern candidate, the question will be who will be that Southern candidate. And I can tell you, where you have 13 aspirants, at least nine will support the Southern candidate. And that candidate will win at the election. So what he thinks, or what is binding on him, is not, not consequential at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of confidence for you when you say that, that you know, the can, candidate will win, uh, you know, at the general elections. Uh, you know, a lot of Nigerians might not agree with you on that particular one. But let's move away from it. Let's also but stay what, with the... Sorry, I agree with you on which one. Uh, you say that uh, whatever candidate that you have, nine persons agreeing amongst the 13, would become the candidate, uh, you know, that the APC would definitely accept. And of course... Uh, on the long run, would become the candidate that will win the uh, 2023 election. No, I did not say we'll win the election. No, I didn't say that. Please. Okay, my I bad. I said we'll win the primaries, not the election, please. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's, it's okay for all of that clarity. But um, let's look at this one now. If we understand that you have a group of persons who have been agitating and asking for um, they are saying that they haven't been part of the system. They feel marginalized. As a matter of fact, they have been marginalized. And so um, if you also look at the gentleman's agreement that is not uh, recognized constitutionally, you talk about the principle of zoning and those who actually enshrined it and, and it has become a practice. One would think that you know, the APC should have considered saying that, oh, this is what it is. A certain region is asking. And the argument across the board, I mean, allow me, is that every region in Nigeria would have a person that's capable. So the issue of capacity, who, you, if they have you know, what it takes to become president or occupy a certain office. Uh, in every region, you have a certain individual that has that capacity. Why has the APC? not been very definite with your decision. Because when you say you are allowing the presidency to this, you know, zoning to the south, you, you know that you have the south-south. You have 
the southeast and you have the southwest. So why? Why has the APC not been very definite with your decision? What zone no, not, not exactly? Me, if you heard me clearly, I said, normally for equity, fairness, and justice, it should go to the southeast. I have my preferred candidate, Roti Michibuka Amici. That's the truth. Who is south south? Yes. But I say, in terms of equity, fairness, and justice, we should actually go to the southeast. But for certain reasons, for now, they might not want to give it to the southeast. Especially when you consider the issue of DSN and I4. Although the southeastern will also argue that that is a function of marginalization and segregation, and that if they are given, it will put an end to mark the cessation of hostility. If I said this, so, but then, it is not up to you or up to your career. It is up to Buari and his colleagues and lieutenants. That's the issue. That's the point there. And that will also, as I've also said, it should be thrown open. Yeah, they should just say, let the South South contest. No, sorry, let the South. And from among the South, you choose. If the law falls on the evils, on the southeast, on the south south, on the south west, fine. But that will not happen. They will not have such a, uh, uh, how will I put it, uh, that free will, so to speak. The president will force a candidate, that latitude, that was the word I wanted. They will not be given the latitude. So the president will force a candidate. He already has a candidate close to his chest. And that is that candidate he wants to force on the party. He has said, look, I will not disclose the identity of the candidate because they will kill him. And that is what he's trying to do. That is why he's insisting on a, a, a president from the South. Now, is it going to be Southeast? Is it going to be Southwest? Is it going to be South South? We will know. Maximum 24 hours from now, we will know. But if we talk of equity, fairness, and justice, it should actually be the Southeast. But I don't see them giving it to the Southeast. Okay. That is the truth about it. Uh, if, okay, so but, but, but we need to move away now. I mean, because we're out of time. But the question is, why? I mean, understanding, you know, the issue that we have at hand, understanding the dynamics. And we're talking about democracy. We're talking about fairness here. We're talking about justice and equity. And one would say that, why would the APC the not why, consider the, the exact I issue? I mean, why do we have to, uh, you know, dilly dally? The why is what I just explained to you, Leslie. ESN, IPOB. I just explained everything. Say why? Uh, Although there will also be a counter argument okay. that you have that because they have been marginalized and discriminated against. But that is your thinking. That is my thinking. Will that be their thinking? That is the issue. That's the point I'm making. That's why right. I said it should have been thrown open ordinarily. Well, but we... it won't be thrown open. That's okay. Uh, thank you so much, Okunabong Katare, for being part after breakfast this morning, after press to be precise. Okunabong Katare is a public affairs analyst. and uh, Thank he, you. Of course. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate you. And we look forward to sharing your thoughts, uh, you know, on Monday next week. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. And that's the size of it. And after press, we'll return tomorrow with more headlines, interesting and great analysis coming your way right here on Plus TV Africa and on The Breakfast. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll tell you what happened today in history. And afterwards, we'll go straight to the Owo attack where you had gunmen kill worshippers in Ondo State. Would regional security outfit be the solution for you know security concerns in Nigeria stay with us